Hey guys, Sid here and today we are continuing the WWDC series and the all new Mac Pro and the new display from Apple is what we are going to talk today. If you want to see the previous videos in the series, head to the link here and in the descriptions. So now that's out of the way, let's talk about the Mac Pro. The new Mac Pro comes in a cheese grater style case that is easily removable. All you have to do is lift the handle in the middle of the case at the top and rotate and pull the case up and off. All internal modules are fixed onto an outer frame. The top part of the frame comes out of the case and doubles as handle for the Mac Pro. This frame allows uh, for 360 degree access to the system. This is a Mac Pro everyone wanted. Again, Apple moving in the right direction and I appreciate Apple for the most awaited move. The Mac Pro not only shines in modularity as it has 8 PCIe slots, 4 out of which are double byte slots, 3 of which are single byte slots and 1 is a half byte slot populated by the I.O. card. The I.O. card provides 2 Thunderbolt 3 ports, uh, 2 USB-A ports and a 3.5mm headphone jack and 2 more Thunderbolt 3 ports on the top of the case. This is also probably the fastest and the most powerful system out there now. Why? Because in terms of networking, it has two 10 GB uh, Ethernet ports and for graphics processing, Apple introduces a new module called the Mac Pro Expansion Module MPX in short. This is kind of like a GPU enclosure that can have a few options of graphics cards configured in it. The viable options are Radeon Pro 580X, Radeon Pro Vega 2, Radeon Pro Vega 2 Duo, which is basically like having two graphics cards, that is, there will be two Radeon Pro Vega 2 GPUs connected via AMD's Infinity Fabric Link. And thing gets crazier because you can have two of these duo cards installed and that's a lot of GPU power. Now moving on to CPU power, the beast comes with a maximum configuration of 28 core Intel Xeon processor. Yes, that's a very powerful system for a Mac Pro. To add more to the Mac Pro, uh, it supports 2933 MHz ECC memory in 6 channels that is 12 DIMM slots which when filled completely will give you a freaking 1.5 TB of memory and no, I did not say TB instead of GB, it actually has 1.5 terabytes. <laughs> we are not done with power, there is a new card called the Afterburner that is capable of video processing and eliminates the need to use proxies while video editing. For those who don't know what a proxy is, it is a duplicate of the file we uh, use uh, for editing. It has a lower resolution and a simple codec for faster processing in the editing software. So Afterburner allows us to edit 8K videos without proxies and this is possible as the video processing is handed over to the Afterburner which is a hardware accelerated card which can process 6 billion pixels per second. Yes, per second. Which effectively means you can play back 3 streams of 8K ProRes raw footage that is the highest quality of 8K or up to 12 streams of 4K and by playback I mean smooth playback without any proxies, rendering or anything of that sort. But to power this beast is not a trivial task. Which is why the Mac Pro has 1.4 kilowatt power supply and to cool everything down, there is three large fans that suck air in the front and uh, one that blows it out. The cheese plate style of the case helps with cooling, though I can assure you that you will have to clean the system often because there seems to be no filters in place. But thanks to the easily removable case, it's not going to be a bigger of a task. They also give you an option to have wheels attached to the case for the uh, Mac Pro will be pretty heavy at the maximum configurations and you don't want to have to pick it up when shifting. There is also a version that is optimized for develop, uh, deployment in Iraq where there are multiple such systems like in a data center. As usual, all this comes at a cost and that is $6,000 for the base version with 8 core Xeon 32GB memory, Radeon Pro 580 uh, GPU and 256GB SSD. But to be honest, this version is just overpriced and is aimed at those who want to flaunt the new Mac Pro and not for those who really care what's inside the system. Yes, it is modern and you can add more RAM and swap out the MPX and uh, change the uh, proce processor. You will end up wanting to do that soon after getting it if it is not just for flaunting purposes but to do actual pro work. Yes, the pro is not there just for the differentiation like the iPad Pro and the pro on other uh, smartphones like a OnePlus 7 Pro. It is to indicate that it is intended for real creative professional work which have real intensive work to do and for them the base version is waste of money and on the other hand better configurations and with uh, better pricing for 
the hardware in them are pretty good and it's all power. With all the power, the power uh, problem of pros are solved. Now only if they could have a great display and yes Apple thought of the same which is why they created a display to match the Mac Pro with a cheese grater brand. And this display is a beast on its own and before even getting into the details I would like to tell you that the Mac Pro can have multiple of these beastly displays connected to it. Okay now let's talk about the dis details. It is a 32 inch LCD display. Now you may think that's not beastly it's only LCD and 32 inches. But the beast part is yet to come. It has a resolution of 6K and that is 20 million pixels. The display is great for color work as it has a P3 white ga a color gamut with true 10-bit color. The display is also pre-calibrated and has good and wide viewing angles. There is also a nano textured model that is kind of like a matte display but instead of coating of non-reflective material in the glass is textured, textured or ever so slightly to avoid reflections. The Beast has 1000 nits sustained brightness and 1600 nits peak brightness and for the layman that means it gets pretty bright. It also has a 1 million to 1 contrast ratio enabling for awesome color, work, color correction and grading work. This in effect exceeds the HDR standards and Apple is calling it the XDR extreme dynamic range. Since the display is also bright and there is a powerful controller in it, it has to cool everything using a huge fan on the cheese grater again helps with cooling. Now if you are not happy with one of these monitors, don't worry because you can daisy chain 6 of these monitors with the new Mac Pro on maximum configuration. Now what is the cost of the display? Well the Mac version costs as much as the base model Mac Pro, yeah $6000 and the not Mac version is $1000 cheaper at $5000. Another thing is uh, to note is that the display does not come with a stand or a VESA mount. The VESA mount comes at $200 and the stand which uh, can have the display in portrait mode orientation on which the monitor can be placed and removed easily will cost you $1000. Yes, that's super costly stand. There is a million means based on the same. But apart from the price, I'm okay with Apple selling the stand separately because I said before, this is intended for professionals and for them normally displays with less specs cost 4 times the amount and uh, that too don't come with stand because uh, normally they don't change the stands or the mounts very much they have it set up and they just change out the monitors though I would have appreciated if the weighs amount was included but again as I said before it's a proper professional equipment and almost all professional equipments are costly and their accessories are also pretty costly also the stand is a clever way for Apple to make some money because Anybody who gives a damn about looking uh, looks and uh, looking great will agree that if they have the display they will probably get the stand 2 to make it look as 1 and especially if you uh, have the Mac Pro 2 Anyway, both the Mac Pro and the display will be available this fall So that's the new Mac Pro and the Pro, uh, Pro X Display XDR If you dislike the video, you hit that button but if you liked it, hit that uh, like and give feedback Share this video, also check more videos here, here and in the descriptions and if you love the content, it would be great if you hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications by hitting the bell icon so that you don't miss this great content. Until next time, peace.